Good morning, folks. We've got big sunspots on our doorstep, hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin, news on the connection between them. We've had some big earthquakes, and there's some news on fluoride. Let's break it all down, starting at spaceweathernews.com, finding the last 24 hours on our star to be totally silent, dominated by the dark coronal holes. We have had a few small X-ray flare events, but nothing noteworthy, and the solar wind is calm along with Earth's protective magnetosphere. The solar wind from the southern coronal hole should be arriving at Earth tomorrow night or Saturday, just a 24 to 36 hour break between it and the northern system just behind it. The sunspot crested onto our view on the left is all that stands in front of the monster sunspot behind him, set to return imminently. Forecasted for visual contact between today and tomorrow, I think we'll see the loops arching up over the limb tonight. Everyone with the earthquake portions of the Disaster Prediction app on had these alerts come through midday. The global high watch was due to coronal holes, planetary geometry, and the expected ramp up in sunspot number, and we took two magnitude 6 earthquakes, one 200 kilometers beneath Vanuatu, and one up near the surface in Japan that hit dead in a red alert zone, less than 50 miles from the central alert point there. Interesting article out about binary asteroids masquerading as a single comet out between Mars and Jupiter. The orbit isn't scary, and indeed it's more of a wow, you can actually see them both type situation. A quick note, this is the recent total solar irradiance data. As with every other time I've looked after big solar activity like the ones to start this month, there is a drop in TSI, and this is the thing they use to judge whether the sun affects climate. I'm not joking. I hope you can see how silly that is. But more importantly, folks, we have another paper describing solar effect on tropical storm development. There have been a number of papers we've cited in our book, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, but this one is the first to directly isolate the solar wind energy flux and discover a correlation to the production and intensity of tropical storms. So speaking of that, Dominica is recovering, or so we hope. There is no power or communication with the island. Meanwhile, we cringe to think of the footage that'll be coming out of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as the system begins charging northward from there. These forecast models are the European, followed by the GFS model. Our forecasted intensification and westward shifts, if we would indeed get solar flare activity, currently contradict both forecasted pathways to miss the U.S. coastline and the lack of solar activity that we're seeing now. Will the sun wake up again this weekend? We'll see. I'd also like to quickly hit a story outside our normal range, but a topic we do consistently hit on our website podcasts. Fluoride. Needs to go. Likely neurotoxic. And as always, when someone is spreading truth on fluoride, Chan fellows from Harvard are right there stamping the element as not safe for human consumption. Why don't we listen to them? Anyway, be sure to have your alert notifications set for this week, and with our server costs skyrocketing, I recommend you get it now while there is no annual fee. Website members, I drove into yesterday's climate change bombshell paper in your latest episode of Deeper Look. We've got your wind maps run up through the atmosphere and shots of our star to close here. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.